Hi guys, you're a CJ Reviews here with another Yu-Gi-Oh! video. Um, I'm going to be doing something different, it's not going to be an opening or anything, it's going to be a uh, card review. And uh, some people do this on YouTube, and I thought it's something I'd try. Basically, I'm just going to um, take some of my favorite cards that I have in my collection, and uh, I'm going to talk about them and explain their uh, effects and all that stuff, and how you can use them in decks. I mean, I'm not an expert, but I'll do my best. It's just something I wanted to try. Um, and also... I apologize for not coming out with any uh, Star Wars videos or figure reviews or anything like that. Um, the, I haven't been getting anything new, because uh, long story short, my stores aren't getting anything new. Nowhere around me is getting anything new. Uh, the newest stuff I've seen is the 6 inch uh, Black Series Wave 2, and they don't. I haven't, I've seen every figure but Boba Fett, and that's the only one I'm really interested in. So They've been getting nothing new. I haven't seen any Wave 2 or 3 of the third, three and three quarter inch. So I apologize that I'm just nothing out around me, so I can't get anything new to review. Anyway, let's get on to the, with this. So the first card I'm going to review is the God card, the Wing Dragon of Ra. Um, it's a God card of some debate. Uh, some could debate this is the best God card, and others could debate it's the worst one. I like to consider it's really both. It's both the best and the worst, and I'll tell you why. Anyways, this copy of the card is the um, Shonen Jump uh, promo. Um, it's a uh, ultra air foil, and it's the uh, alternate art. And I actually really like the alternate art for the Wing Dragon Raw. It does look very good. I think I really like it. So you do have the ultra foil. Anyways, he's divine, divine beast with effect, ten stars. And uh, question mark attack and defense. So let's take a look at his effect. I'll read the effect and I'll go through it. It'll focus. Gonna focus. There we go. This card cannot be special summoned. You must tribute three monsters to normal summon this card. You cannot set this card. The normal summon of this card cannot be negated. Sorry about that. When this card is normal summoned, spells, traps, and other monster effects cannot be activated. When this card is summoned, or normal summoned, you can pay into life points, so you can only have 100 left. To have this card gain attack and defense equal to the amount of life points paid. You can pay 1,000 life points to select and destroy one monster on the field. So, that's the effect. Uh, it's time to start talking about it. Um, it takes some aspect from the anime. Honestly, if the Winged Dragon of Raw had more of the effects of the anime, this card would be the best god card, because the effects on there were crazy, but that's why they didn't make it with the effects of the anime, because then it would be too OP, too broken. But um, basically, you can't special summon it, so you can't, once it's in the graveyard, you can't special summon it from the graveyard, you can't special summon it from the deck, you can't special summon it from the banishment. Um, that's pretty basic. You gotta tribute three monsters, so you have to get three monsters successfully on the field first, and then you have to tribute them. That's all basic stuff. You cannot set it, so you basically can't put a face down defense. Um, you can't negate the normal summon, so when you summon it, uh, he's gonna come out no matter what. They cannot negate that. And also, they can't activate traps and spells to, like, rate when he's summoned to depower him or something like adhesive. Trap hole when it has to the attack, they can't activate that. You're not allowed to do that, so he won't get affected by that. Um, but other than that, after he's summoned, it's fair game. The Ring Dragon of Rock can be affected by anything traps, spells, or monster effects, which makes him very, very vulnerable. And he's a very high risk, which I'll also get to in a second. His effect, where you can spend life points to. Uh, get him into attack was a rule I actually was using incorrectly for a while. I was just selecting how many life points you had to, to use. You actually have to spend life points so you only have 100 left. Um, it does actually say that on the card. I just was confused. Um, yeah, so if you're going to give this guy and you have to do it when you normal summon, you got to make a choice whether you're going to give him the attack or not. It is an optional effect, but you have to make a decision. And you can either give up all your, pretty much almost all of your life points to power up Raw and make him really powerful, but in the process, you really risk your life points because all your opponent has to do is play like a Sparks and then they, just, they win the duel. Um, so I'll get into... Um, things you can do to actually 
kind of prevent that. But um, yeah, that's one of the downsides to him. He's a huge risk, so you really have to make it. If you're going to run him, you have to really have the deck has to really revolve around supporting him. Um, his other effect is that you pay a thousand life to destroy a monster on the field. That's a pretty good effect. Can't really complain with that. Now, if you want to, you don't have to use his attacking effect. You can have him attack, have zero attack and defense, put him like defense or something, and just have him spend a thousand life points to destroy monsters. Now, you could do that, and that's fine. Um, but what you, what you want to do is you really want to combo him up with cards that um, make him unaffected by spells, traps, and monster effects. That's what you really want to do. Um, when I run him, uh, now I don't run him in tournament decks, and I don't, I don't ever recommend running the Wing Dragon to run a tournament deck. He's, I, yeah, I'd never run this guy in a tournament deck. He's not worth it. But it, he is fun to use just to play around with in a traditional play, which is what I do. Um, I put March of the Monarchs in my deck because that uh, tribute summon monster, which this is, this is tribute summoned. Um, he, if well, March of the Monarchs on the field, he can't be affected by pretty much any spell trap monster effect which is pretty cool and that's a good one to combo him up with uh you come up with a safe zone i don't see why not and a bunch of other cards just cards that uh make it like either equip to him or affect him so he cannot be affected by other card effects that's what you want if you're going to use this card that's really what you're going to want um especially if you're using the um life uh, attack gaining effect. Now, if you're just using that effect, you don't really need to worry about it. But for the attack gaining effect, um, that's what you want. Also, you're going to want to have a bunch of cards that, oh, in my opinion, you're going to want to have a bunch of cards that gain you life points. Um, Dying Keto, 1,000 life points right off the bat. Draining Shields, stuff like that to um, get get your, like, right after you play him, get your life points back up so you don't risk getting that little bit of damage from a magic card that will wreck you. Um, and also, you should also, if you aren't going to run cards, you can run it with them too, but you're not going to run too many cards that stop him, that help him from not being affected by card effects. So you're going to want to have cards that uh, wipe their field of spell and trap cards. Now, if you're playing traditional play, you can use Harvey's Feather Duster or Heavy Storm, whatever. Um, but Malevolent Catastrophe is a good one. Uh, if when your opponent declares attack, all spell and trap cards are gone. You really want to either wipe their field to attack with this guy, or you're going to want to have him well, well protected to attack with this guy. If you don't have either of those, then you sh really shouldn't use this card. But I don't think it's a terrible card. Like, I mean, it, I think. I don't think it's the worst god card. I don't think any of them are terrible. I think it's the most the risk taking god card. It's the most risk taking god card. It's not any worse than the others per se. It's not better per se. I think it's just you risk the most with this one. You gamble the most with this one. Um, Obelisk, which is a video I'll do soon, is the safest one to play. And Slifer is one of the most useful ones to play. Uh, and this one can do massive amounts of damage. You can really wreck with this card, but you need to give it the support it needs, or else it won't um, it won't succeed, and you'll probably lose because you won't have any life points and no monsters on the field and all that. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Overall, I say. It's fun to run in maybe a traditional play deck, just to fool around with it, have a little fun with it. Don't put it in a tournament deck. It's Unless you have a really good build, if you figured out a really good build, which is a really good tournament deck, then by all means, go right ahead. But I don't think this will ever be good for tournaments. Never. I don't think it ever will be. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, and... Keep dueling, and I'll see you all next video.